Hey guys, happy new year. I am back with a wrap up of my keto experience in 2021. Most specifically, this video is going to be what I've learned when I look back over the last six months of keto and what I see as what are the adjustments that I made later on that have been the most impactful? What has been, what has been the most positive change, changes? What have been the most positive changes that I've made that have made the most positive impact from a weight loss perspective? I'm gonna share those with you today and then tell you, you know, like what, there's definitely been when I look back, kind of three distinct phases over those past six months. And I'm gonna share those with you today. So we're gonna look back over this six month experience, this six month transformation. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna share those three phases with you because there's definitely been some lessons um, that I've learned. And I think that those are gonna be really good for all of you. It's gonna save a lot of you guys some time when you're starting your keto journey. And uh, this is some really good, juicy stuff. So let's get started. Welcome back, everybody. I am Kelly Alexa, your host for this video. I am a confidence coach, serial entrepreneur, fitness fanatic, most recently, obviously, a keto convert. That's right, keto convert last year. I went keto starting uh, June 1st officially. I kind of went like dipping my toe in the water keto just before that. Um, but officially I went keto on June 1st and experienced a surprising but overwhelmingly positive uh, transformation last year from June 1st on and lost uh, 32 inches and 25 pounds. And um, I can just say that last year was just transformative on every level. Um, I have never felt more confident than I do right now, more proud, more excited, more happy than I do in my own body, and more passionate about spreading the word about how beneficial the keto diet is, particularly for women in their 40s and beyond who, like me, have hormonal imbalances and particularly hormonal imbalances and insulin issues, and therefore are in a pattern of not being able to lose weight. For those women in particular, keto is like the magic solution. Keto and fasting is like the magic solution. And certainly I figured out a way to approach it with my doctor, certainly, um, that just worked. And I mean, I've been doing this now for six months. This is a lifestyle. This is not what I consider to be like a diet that I'm on where I'm like, oh my God, how, how much longer till I'm off? Um, this is a lifestyle. This is something that is clearly sustainable. Um, this is something that I have just consistently and easily lost weight. It is the best thing ever. And um, yeah, like I said, I am overwhelmingly passionate, unapologetically passionate about spreading the word about this. I want every woman to know about this. And uh, I'm getting certified as a keto coach this quarter um, so that I can, you know, feel better about coaching women. Um, so many women are coming to me wanting me to coach them and help them lose weight. And I just wanted to have a, like an official certification behind me uh, as I'm doing that. I've, I've helped coach a number of women already, all of whom have lost more than 20 pounds um, with my assistance. So um, just want to have that official certification behind me as well. So that said, what are we going to talk about today? Um, in this video, we are going to talk about, like I said at the beginning, my observations in retrospect. Um, like when I look back at the last six months, what are my observations? You know, what worked, what didn't work? And most notably, what have I observed has been the most effective. I've made some changes more towards the back end of the last six months, and it's been 
the changes that I've made towards the last, the latter part of the last six months have been the best for me. They've made, they've made this diet the most enjoyable for me, but they've also made like my, my fat loss happened more, my transformation and fat loss happened more towards the latter part of the six month period. And I definitely can kind of pinpoint it to when I made some of these very specific changes. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I'm gonna just kind of do an overview of these, di these different phases and my observations and, and the recommendations that I would make for some of you that are just getting started so that you can learn from me. Again, um, the purpose of everything I do here on my blog and my YouTube channel is to save you time so that you can learn the lessons from me. Um, so lucky you, you get to learn from my lessons. So let's get started. Okay, so let's look at, or when I look at the six months of last year, when I went keto, I was just having this conversation with my friend Sherry. And the, um, the reason that this really came to my attention is that I was creating a, um, I was creating a TikTok and I just got on TikTok, you guys. So of course, please show your support for your girl, Kelly. If you're on TikTok, get on over there. I'll make sure that I link it down below and follow me over there too. Um, because I, I need your followers. I'm, I'm new over there. I need your support. Um, and um, so I was, I was creating this TikTok and they have this thing called a morph where you can take, um, you know, pictures of yourself through time and have it like morph you and you know, like before and after, right? Like a, like a time-lapse. So it's going on my, I was going on my iPhone and I was taking pictures of myself, you know, from the six months period and I was putting them in a folder and then I was picking certain pictures that I wanted to put into this morph uh, for TikTok. And what I noticed is that when I picked, when I was looking at the pictures from June and then July and then August, September, October, November, I really noticed that the pictures from June and July and the early part of August, and actually, you know what? While we're here, I just wanna look something up. I wanna look up when we went to Park City because I very much remember uh, okay, it looks like we went to Park City the first week in August. That's surprising to me. Um, there's a reason that I'm, that I'm looking this up is because there's, a, there's a, a certain photo that I have of myself that was in Park City. Um, and, that, and that's a very specific date. So, so two months in, there's a certain photo that I'm referring to. So... Um, June and July, the, the photos that I see of myself in keto, I, again, looking at myself now, I am, I, I, I do a double take in the mirror half the time. I, I literally do a double take from the side. I do a double take from the front. For the first time in my life, I have a full length mirror and I'm not scared to look at myself. You guys have no idea. I have always been scared to have a full length mirror because I have just avoided looking at myself in a full length mirror because I never wanted to see my thighs. I never wanted to see my, my hips. I just always avoided at all of these phases in my life. Um, but anyway, the, the photos of my, of myself from June and July still, I still looked very hippie. Um, even though I was, I felt that I was making progress, I looked very hippie. Now, the first time that I saw a picture of myself where I could really see that I was leaning out was when we were in Park City. Now, that was the first week in August. So that was about eight weeks in, two months in. And um, I'm also going to look this up so I can tell you guys because we can put specific, you know, dates on this. Um, but when I started taking these, and, and my last video was, was my review of that uh, Modere trim, 
when I started taking the Modair supplements, for sure, I noticed a difference um, without question. And, and then I think I, I referenced in that video as well, when I, I first started taking just the chocolate pudding and the collagen, and then down the road, I started adding like much later, like a month later, something like that. I added the burn, the diet pill that goes with that, like the fat burning pill, if you will. And within a week of taking that, I lost three inches and two pounds. Like that was something I absolutely noticed. And, and there was nothing else that changed other than just adding that pill. <laughs> and within a week, that's, that's what had changed. Um, but the other thing that, that was one of the biggest changes that I made in that six month time period was food related. And the biggest change that I made, and, and I'll tell you, there was kind of some slight changes I made early on, but that's, it wasn't as notable. I was a little sloppy in the beginning, and I'll get back to that in a minute. But part of what you guys will see if you download my Keto Quick Start Guide, and, and there will be a link below to that. And I'm going to add, by the way, um, for those of you that are watching this now, I'm going to add everything I'm saying right now in this video. I'm going to add, um, I'm going to update the Keto Quick Start Guide. So I'm going to add this to, and I'm going to update that Keto Quick Start Guide because I think that this is really notable. Um, so one of the things that I, because I, I think it, it's so important to not only when you're doing keto, find things that are going to help you lose weight consistently and, and, and at a good pace, but also you want to be able to enjoy food. Okay. Because if, if we just, if it was just a matter of like, how can I lose weight fast? We would, we could just go out and go on the stone soup diet and just eat grass, right? Like it's not just about how can I lose weight fast? Because if that was the case, just go on the HCG diet and you're going to go lose weight fast, but you'll gain it back. You want to be able to lose weight in a good, solid way consistently and keep it off. And while you're doing that, enjoy what you're eating. And that's what I'm going to tell you guys has been so perfect about this past six months is I have lost about a pound, a little bit more than a pound every single week. There have been some weeks where I stayed exactly the same weight. I remember there were some weeks where I was about 147. I, I think I talked about that in that my review of the Modere. I said I was at 147, 147, 147, 147. Then I added that burn and all of a sudden I went down to like 145. Um, but you know, I didn't care. It didn't bother me that I was at 147 because I still felt like I was leaning out. It just, my jeans kept getting looser and looser. It was like, no matter what, I just, things just kept moving in the right direction. So it didn't bother me that the scale kept saying 147. Everything kept moving in the right direction. Bottom line is in all that time, I never had a spike up. Never. It just kept moving in the right direction. My jeans kept getting looser. My tops kept getting looser. Everything kept moving in the right direction. There was never a step backwards. And all that time, I've enjoyed what I've been eating. I've been able to drink alcohol. I've been able to eat good foods. It, the weight has come off. It has never come back on. I have kept it off. I have never felt like I'm on a diet that I need to escape from. These are all key factors, okay? So... One of the things that I was doing, and I mentioned it in the Keto Quick Start Guide that you guys will see, is that I recommended Trader Joe's has all of these really good keto-friendly dips. And I recommended the buffalo chicken dip. They've got this salmon um, dip. They've got, and I still would recommend these. These are fantastic. Problem is, I have a problem that when I like something, I will eat it every single day. And that was my problem is I was eating buffalo chicken dip every single day and I was eating it with plantain chips. Problem with plantain chips and with an obsessive personality like me is every plantain chip is one carb. And so I would take out a serving of those. I would take 20 of them. 
and I would have 20 plantain chips and I would have a serving of the dip. And one serving of the dip I think is like, so it's like 250 calories. It wasn't like a high calorie lunch or anything like that. Good amount of protein, whatever, very filling. But the problem is, is I would have a certain amount of plantain chips and then I would go back and I would have a few more. And the bottom line is I would have, I would kind of blow a lot of carbs on these plantain chips. The plantain chips really became this devil that was haunting me during the day. It was like, hey Kelly, have some more plantain chips. And it really just became this problem because I would have plantain chips. And the other thing that I was doing is I was still kind of letting my mind tell me like, oh, well, you should have some dessert. You should have um, some uh, nut butter for dessert. And, I, and so I was having this, um, and again, it wasn't necessarily that I was listening to my stomach because my stomach wasn't necessarily hungry, but I was just, I just got into a habit where I would have, you know, the, um, the dips for lunch and I wouldn't have a big enough portion. And then I would have nut butter, like a serving of nut butter. And so I'd have 20 chips, maybe 25 chips, that's 25 carbs. And then I'd have a serving of nut butter, that's nine carbs. So it'd be 25 carbs plus nine carbs, that's 35, 36, maybe 37 carbs. Round that up and you add, you know, my coffee, I think had four carbs or something like that. I was hitting like 40 carbs during the day. My total amount of carbs I'm supposed to hit for the day is 50. And so what happened is I would get really frustrated because then if, if we got to dinner and I wanted to have any kind of carbs at all, you know, sometimes you got to realize like even green beans can have like seven carbs. I just would get to the point where I was like, I would get to dinner and I had no carbs left. And that got super frustrating. If we wanted to go have sushi, I realized I couldn't even have a quarter of a cup of rice because I'd blown all my carbs during the day. And I just had this realization like I'm being really dumb because my first realization was I need to either have a serving of nut butter or plantain chips. And then finally I just said to myself, here's the deal. Kelly, stop having all the dips. And I did. I, sometimes I'm really good like this. I just, I just cut. Sorry, I realized I had my ketones here. <sighs> when you need the good stuff, you need the good stuff. Um, uh, I finally really just made that decision. And I said, what are you doing? This, this isn't a really good idea to have dips for lunch all the time. And sometimes that's just something I'm really good at is like just cutting something cold turkey. And I'm like, here's the deal. Like I have a problem with plantain chips right now. I'm getting out of hand with these plantain chips. And I did, and I just said, I'm cutting them cold turkey and I cut out the plantain chips, I stopped going to Trader Joe's and buying all those damn dips. It doesn't mean that they're bad. I'm not telling all of you guys, don't, don't listen to my advice in the Keto Quick Start Guide because I think that they're, they're delicious, but you shouldn't do what I was doing and only be eating dips as a meal. And that's the problem is I got into a really lazy habit of only having dips. Don't do that. Have, if you, if you want to have like dip for lunch one day, that's cool, but that should be a rule. Like you can have dip on a day when you're really being lazy, but like you should have, you should have meals. I, I've had a problem working from home being lazy for lunch. And that's something that I'm committed to not doing is just making sure I have meals, whether I order sushi and have it delivered or make sure that I just get out and go to lunch, whatever. I need to have meals. And so once I cut that out, you guys, here's the thing. Once I cut out the plantain chips and having those Trader Joe's dips all the time, and I started ordering from Uber Eats, and I started getting out and meeting my girlfriends for lunch and actually having meals, 
And once I started making sure that I had two of my ketones drinks every day, because let me tell you, when I have two of these every day, one in the afternoon and one mid-morning, I do not snack. I have absolutely no cravings, no appetite whatsoever. I am just pleasantly full. I don't have soda. I don't have coffee. I just am like this pleasant human being who is just drinking. Well, I could do better about drinking water. That's another video we'll get to. But freaking exogenous ketones are like the most magical thing on the planet and no one's gonna tell me otherwise. You need to order them. You need to give up your Starbucks and do a test run because they're the most amazing thing for your energy. They're the most amazing thing for your focus and the most amazing thing for curbing your appetite ever, period. So I cut out the plantain chips. I make sure that I have two of those a day. My husband's not even keto. He does two of them a day. And so now what I do is... I have lunch, I have an actual meal, and I don't eat again until dinner. I don't snack, and it's the most beautiful thing ever. And it's just worked. Ever since I cut those plantain chips, I no longer touch nut butter during the day. I have the same stash of nut butter that I bought like four months ago. And what's funny is now when I go into my pantry and I look at it, I'm just like, You've lost that love and feeling, baby. I just, it's not there. I mean, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I do. But we, we're not, it's not, you know. That's the way it is. Like, it's changed. That was one of the biggest changes I made, you guys. And it made a noticeable change um, because it was right around August um, when I came back, my diet changed. Um, my diet changed because I really, before that, I think before that I was doing keto, but I was still, um, when I was still eating the nut butter, that was me still trying to satisfy my sweet tooth. Um, when I was eating the plantain chips, I, I'm just gonna, this is me, I'm gonna close up on this and I'm just keeping it real because I can look back in retrospect and see. And I think when people start keto, this is gonna be your tendency if you're new. When I look at myself and I think about me eating the nut butter in the afternoon, um, even though I was eating really clean nut butters with clean ingredients and whatever, the reason I was eating nut butter is because it was sweet. And I would say it, I would say this satisfies my sweet tooth. The reason that I loved plantain chips is it satisfied my need for a carb. It was crunchy. It was like a potato chip. That's why I ate it. And when you eat those things, you're still kind of keeping your body and your, your brain and your taste buds like in your old, in your old life. And if you really, if you really want to give keto a chance to change your body and change your, I don't know, change your physiology. I don't know if that's the right word. Like my whole being has changed. My appetite has changed forever. I, everything about me is different. When I sit down to eat a meal, I get full so fast now. Sometimes I, I will sit across from Steve and I'll, we'll be eating and I'm like, I can't, I'm getting full. And I look at my plate and I'm like, who am I? Like, am I that girl? Am I that girl that's full? And I'm looking at my plate. I'm like, I can't believe I'm full, but I do. I get full so much faster. I, I just don't have the same relationship with food. I don't think about food. I don't obsess about food. You guys, I've talked about this in other videos, but I could not have made myself change this way if I tried. It just happened. But when I was still eating that way in the beginning of keto, you know, letting myself have the plantain chips. And I think a, a lot of people who start keto and they go and they buy all of the protein bars and they do the net carbs and they're still having a lot of the, the gluten and the bread and the cookies. 
I don't think they'll be as successful because they're still living a life and eating a diet that's very much like a non-keto diet. Their taste buds will never change. Their cravings will never change. And so they're not going to have their bodies and their brains and their, their cravings change. And they won't experience the, I was about to say, they won't experience the miracle. But in a way, I, I know I'm going to sound cheesy, but it's pretty miraculous what I've experienced. I'm just going to say it, you know? I, I mean, everything about my life has changed. Everything about my hunger has changed. Everything about the way I eat has changed. Everything about the way I live has changed. Um, you can't put a price tag on that. Um, it is incredible. So that is just the, it seems very simple for me to say that, but that's the biggest change that I made. Number one, it was adding those, those supplements. Supplements make a big deal. So the biggest, the biggest supplements that I take, obviously the exogenous ketones, that was first. And then number two, I added the Modere supplements. So I take the, the trim and the lean body system, um, which is pretty simple. It's just the chocolate trim pudding and then the, um, um, the burn pills. Um, those are, those are the two. And then, um, I cut out snacking, um, meaning no more nut butters. And I just make sure I have two of the exogenous ketones a day, which keeps me from snacking. I cut out having plantain chips and the dips for meals. Doesn't mean that the dips are bad in and of themselves. It just means I made myself have actual meals for lunch. Um, and, it, and again, I don't want to say if you read my keto quick start guide that those dips, I would, that I would not recommend them. I just wouldn't recommend doing what I did and going to Trader Joe's and buying six or seven of them and having those for more than one lunch a week. I would say, you know, buy two of them and, and you know, maybe, maybe let yourself have them that for a lunch you know, if you're really busy one day, that could be for lunch once a day, you know, one, one time a week. Um, that should be what a normal person does. I can be a little bit of an extremist. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, again, I will be having a lot more videos coming up, um, keto focused, um, with much more, um, specific topics. I'm here to answer any other questions that you have on keto. However I can help, please let me know. Let me know what questions you have. Um, however I can help, what, what videos would you like to see me, uh, shoot in the future? Um, what, what questions can I answer um, coming up? Let me know. Um, right now, just to wrap up in closing, like I said, I've lost 32, um, 32 inches, 25 pounds. I now am only just two pounds away from my goal weight. I am age 52. Hopefully that motivates the hell out of you. I hope that this video motivates all of you who have been skeptical about keto to give it a try. I will put the link so that you guys can download my Keto Quit Start Guide. It is free for any of you. Hopefully you'll find it a helpful resource. Let me know what questions you guys have. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button and leave me a comment. I love to hear from you guys. And again, let me know what questions you have. I'm happy to help answer any of them. I'll talk to you guys soon. See you next time. Everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this video was helpful. If it was and you're interested in keto, I have a whole playlist with a ton more keto videos for you. Tune in here and also make sure you are subscribed. I will see you guys next time.